the order. You will notice we have a new look for the boardroom, a new setup. Uh, Danny and I shoved tables around, new chairs last Wednesday, did a whole cleanup on this room. And hopefully it's so that you will have a better vision of the screen. Y'all are definitely sitting at a disadvantage in that. And also have easier access to the podium. We'll try this out. If it doesn't work, then we'll try something different. I also mentioned we have a new sign-in sheet for comments. Uh, we've talked with our district's attorney. Uh, in accordance to his advice, we're modifying our meeting procedures, and we're going to be using procedures that are standard in almost all governmental meetings, and hopefully we'll streamline the meeting. If you would like to speak during the public session, you'll need to note it on the sign-in sheet. Uh, it needs to be items that are germane to Holiday Island. And we're modifying uh, procedures where you will have an opportunity to talk at the first public comment session, and then after each new business item, we'll have the presentation of whatever the new business item is, the commissioners will have their comments, and then we will allow uh, public comments, and I will be working directly off of that sheet. So uh, we will not be raising, recognizing raised hands. So you are not obligated to speak if you know that you want to and then decide that's not necessary. If I call your name, you can certainly pass. Let's see. We will also be adopting uh, administrative code over the next two months to eliminate the public comment section at the end of the meeting. If you're allowed to talk during the new business section, then that should negate the reason for having that one at the ending. And that would basically make our procedures standard in, in all governmental meetings. So let's... Uh, stand for the pledge, please. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Commissioner Surratt, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Uh, Chairwoman Childers, here. Vice Chairman Dyer, here. Secretary Surratt, here. Chair, uh, Council, excuse me, Commissioner Stamps, here. Commissioner Brown, here. All present. I declare a quorum. All five members of the board are uh, present. <coughs> uh, you have seen the agenda. It has been emailed to you. It also was available on uh, the holiday on happenings on Friday had a chance to review it. Uh, we need to have a motion to approve the agenda. Madam Chair, I, I was going to ask to add an item on the agenda, but I think I can cover it under number one, new business about the bid and demolition. Okay. So I will forego that. All right, so you are you making a motion to approve the agenda as is? Yes. Commissioner Brown has made a motion to approve the agenda as is. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, Commissioner Stamps is seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, were there any minutes to approve? I don't think so. I think so. that would be at the regular. That, yes. <laughs> yes, and this is a special meeting, so that would occur at the regular meeting. All right, ceremonial. We really don't normally have ceremonial, but I want to make the community aware that our district manager, is a, who is a credentialed, City manager has recently, you didn't know I was going to do this, did you? <laughs> no, I had no idea. <laughs> he has received uh, notification that he has uh, been approved for recertification as a professional community and economic developer. There are only 165 of these people in the nation. So we are so fortunate that Mr. Presley decided that he wanted to come back to his roots in Arkansas <laughs> and join us. So congratulations on receiving your recertification. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, do any of the commissioners have announcements? Okay, can you bring me the... Uh, Sheet for public comments, please. I forgot already. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it down soon. <laughs> <clears throat> Madam 
Madam Chairman, is, is this a time to make an announcement from the Chamber? Yes, ma'am. May I? Yes. Thank you. I beat y'all to death for a reason. <coughs> because the Chamber is a very active organization and we work in cooperation with all of the other organizations within Holiday Island to promote uh, uh, all the good things that are at Holiday Island and at the Chamber of uh, one of our biggest goals is to support our local merchants. In that vein, I did want to thank Colin for uh, stepping up to do our business after hours for September, which will be Thursday, September 8th. Yes. From 5.30 to 7, he will offer live music and free food. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. And that will be what? Pizza and. Pizza and bone swings. It's in bonus swing. So if you've not taken advantage of the opportunity, and I think today is a good day uh, to bring things like this to light. Uh, our marina, as you know, on a personal level, I've always said from the day I've stepped in the door, that we have the biggest asset. That we're very fortunate to have Table Rock like right there in our front door. Yet we are under under utilizing that asset. And it's through promotional items like this that we do bring attention not only to our community members, but outside the community members. And we've spent a lot of advertising uh, time and money to be able to promote Holiday Island in this thing. So be there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's move along to public comments. Let's see. During the open session, uh, Ms. Talbot, was that what you were going to make the? Nope. OK, that's something different? Yes. That's later on the agenda then. Whenever you have to. Okay. All right. Um, Dylan Clover is. Yeah. Okay. What, are you wanting to talk about the marina? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is. Well, let's save the marina or the demolition item uh, comments until later. And let me go down and see if there's anyone. Uh, Mayor, did you have anything else other than any general public comment? Any general item? Not at this time. Uh, Dustin Kelly, I'm assuming you would yes. like to talk about Marina? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, Al, Mr. Selleck, do you have a general comment? Sure. You'll go to the podium, please. I don't want you to get to the old list. <laughs> please state your name and address. Oh, Al Selleck, 22 Bucks Gun Lane. Uh, I just want to comment about the water bill for a minute. Our minimum water bill, I mean, you can do a lot of different things with figures, with figures a lot of ways. Some people in our community love to do that. Uh, our, our basic water bill is 4216. Uh, if you take off the security fee, which has nothing to do with the water department, that's 3674. And everybody says, oh, my water is 3674. It's so expensive. I just wanted, I did a comparison back to, in 2014, <coughs> I lived on the north side of Houston. Outside of Houston city limits, we were in uh, Cypress Champions Public Utility District. And our basic water bill at that time was 3650. But we also had to pay a tax. When you paid your tax at the end of the year, you paid water tax, county tax, and school district tax. And that was $462, which comes out to like $38.50 a month. So in 2014, several years back, our true basic water bill was $76. So I think Holiday Island is a bit of a bargain. And as far as garbage service also, we were paying $38.22 a month because we pay by the quarter, but if you divide it out to the month, it was 28, 22. And the current service that I have here, which is pretty much the same thing, I'm only paying $18 for. So in my personal opinion, I think Holiday Island's got some real values. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> Ms. Selleck, you had a general comment about buildings, or is that for later? Later. Later. All right. All right, we've made it through our comment section. All right, let's see. We have no reports. We have no old business. 
So let's move along to new business, which is to review and award the bid for Recreation Center demolition and pad. And I would like to be sure to, to let everyone know that we talked last week about it was advertised in the Carroll County newspaper. It was also advertised in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, so it went all over the state. <coughs> and we still only got one bid, which unfortunately in today's world is not surprising. Would you like to talk about that, Mr. Presley? Well, we we found uh, the same thing we found when we were looking at contractors to come out here and um, uh, rebuild the recreation center. It's very, very expensive to mobilize big, heavy equipment and move it out here to a rural area like Holiday Island. That eats up a lot of their profit just to come out here and work. If it's an extended project that's going to take two or three weeks or two or three months, then they have to pay per diem and put their people up. And it's just, it's just very difficult to get people to come here from the larger urban areas uh, in Arkansas. So that's what led to us only getting one bid. Uh, and here it is, the, uh, the bid that we got was 56250 And then uh, on the next page, if you'll scroll down, please, um, uh, you'll see that's 24500 And that is to prepare uh, the site with the pad for a new building. And this will be done in conjunction with a company called, um, I believe it's GTS. Uh, they're an engineering company that works a lot with ESI, who's our contract engineers. And uh, that's who they, they recommended. So that they'll come out and they'll test the material. They'll test for compaction and, and make sure that there's an engineer approved pad there for um, a new building. All right. Do we have any commissioner comments? Um, I, I think maybe it's time now, Madam Chair, for my comment, but uh, I, I'm going to vote aye for this uh, project. I think it's a fair amount. Uh, I worked with a school in Houston that was uh, asbestos removal and partially demolished, and it was $2 million uh, budget, $2 million cost. There were uh, eight or ten uh, men and women in there in uh, white suits for three, four months, uh, and so I know this is a big deal. But uh, what my concern is, and I know we can't uh, alter anything today, but is the total cost of the project of the rec center. Uh, today we're approving just over $100,000 $100, demo uh, asbestos and preparing a pad for the new building. Uh, we had Eric in here last week looking at the new plan, the CAD system that was up on the screen. That looks great. All of those were uh, very good, uh, but the problem is I don't think we've uh, studied enough the total cost of the project and where the funds are coming from. Uh, we have a really big item coming up on the uh, water for the uh, ultraviolet system that we talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we've got some money coming in from the sale of the land by the tower, but uh, we've got, I think it's uh, 19 or so uh, pressure reducing valves. We've got a lot of money uh, that's got to go out and it's got to be in the, uh, the budget for 2023, including this one. Uh, we had asked Danny to go out and get bids. He did that. We're acting on it today. So, but uh, what I wish that we had done was maybe look for some other uh, possibilities uh, other than destroying the rec center building. And, uh, uh, I think we could have used that even next year and we'll run things out of the uh, out of the uh, crystal room, the island room. The restrooms there, the showers are working just fine. Uh, the pool is not going to be changed in any way, the big pool or the little pool. So uh, I don't know where the money is going to come from at the end of when we have to pay all the bills. And um, so uh, that's my only comment on it and I didn't think we needed a new item on it. but. We're going through, uh, I think what I would like to do when we get to the building phase is to maybe cut it back, cut back the uh, project that Eric showed us last week. And I don't know how we're going to do that, but uh, for just what we use that building for, checking in swimmers, checking in golfers, not many, 
pickleball players sign up on a clipboard <coughs> down at the pickleball court. They don't even have to go in there. Um, so I think I think we're um, really going to have to have sharp pencils going forward, including the AOB that we have to look at, the amount of money that we spend on our assessments going forward to make Holiday Island last longer. Thank you. Do we have other comments? We have money in the budget, do we not? We do have money in the budget, yes. It's we, already been allocated. Yeah, this money has been allocated. We, Held a lot of money back during last year's budget session because we did this expense. So sure. There's not enough to cover all of this. What we're doing today, plus I think we have 300 in there, is what you told me. 300,000. This total project that I just totaled up <coughs> should be about over 500. Mm -hmm. Over 500. Our, um, we have not gotten a bid though. <coughs> yeah. I know that. I, I'd like well, to know how, how you're coming up with that well, number. The, the builders, have, I've talked to two of them, and they're 220 to 240 a square foot. Now, if they're, down, if they're down, I'm just saying, if they're down to 180, great, we're going to be in good shape. They could go up to 280. We don't know what's going to happen with the price of lumber, <coughs> materials, cement. We don't know. But this one, I, I didn't expect the 25000 for asbestos removal. We've got to take off a fairly new roof and take out the asbestos shingles. I didn't figure on that. I don't think any of us at the table did. And then the compacting for the new site, I thought that would be in the bid for the new building, but it's not, it's on here. So things just keep going up, up, up. Well, when you follow through with your financials, Holiday Island is in a strong financial position because we have essentially held back strongly on spending any money the last several years, and the department managers have been very frugal. So we've, they've been under budget for the last, for as long as I've been on the board. So, you know, the money is there. But, but the, uh, in, in order for us to make it to 2035, Madam Chair, we cannot be spending $780 on an assessment every year, is my, uh, my information from people who knew, including myself, who worked on forming the city. Uh, and I won't go into that because that's not on the agenda, but we, we cannot continue to keep the assessment where it is, in my opinion. Otherwise, we're going to run out of uh, the ability to keep Holiday Island uh, continual. Well, and essentially, at some point in time, there's no free lunch. If the rest, and there is no retail here. Anything that happens in this community happens because the, the property owners and the residents are willing to pay for it, you know. They didn't get a vote on this. They didn't get a vote they, on this. Yeah, but they elected you to make a decision. Yeah. So thank you for okay. letting us know right. your concerns. All right, thank you. Other, other uh, commissioner comments? Uh, I'll, I'll make a comment that uh, I think Ken is correct in that we need to be extremely diligent about the amount of money we propose spending. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I will be. But likewise, we, we are charged with a balancing act. And we, we have to weigh the wants and desires, the value to the community, all these things on everything we talk about. Whether it's a, a new backhoe for the roads department or, or this issue. Um, <coughs> I know on social media there's been a lot of, of scuttlebutt about the rec center, and if you were to read it, like, unfortunately some people who were thinking about moving here who may have been deterred by that scuttlebutt, uh, you would think it was this was a very haphazard, knee-jerk reaction. Uh, this has been going on for a year. We have had contractors come and evaluate the building. Five contractors, not a one of them, ever gave us a proposal to repair it. Then we had three independent engineers come and evaluate the building. To a person, every one of them said the same thing. It would not be in the best interest of Holiday Island to undertake repairs on the structure. They are so extensive 
and who knows where it would all lead. The cost of repairs would likely exceed the cost of putting up a new building. <clears throat> okay, that's a lot. A lot has gone on, yeah. and uh, now we find out because of the good work of our district manager that not only are we dealing with a uh, failing structure because of rot, black mold, and what all else, but it's also got hazardous material, and we need to deal with that. And I, I am very supportive. I, I think the time has come for this building to come down. You know, uh, one of my favorite sayings is, there's a time when you've got to quit cutting bait and start fishing. And I think we're to the point where we need to start fishing. This will be phase one of this effort to the rec center in my mind, though. The next phase, and, and Danny, this is on you, We've got to have sharp pencils and really looking for ways to bring down the cost of the replacement. It doesn't have to be palatial. Uh, a, a roof structure for shade and, and restrooms and an outdoor shower. Uh, you know, those are, those are necessities to operate a swimming pool. And uh, so I, I charge you with that, sir. Uh, if, if it comes back in and it is, you know, the, the discussion with the architect uh, at our last regular meeting, unfortunately, I think was a little misleading to a lot of the public because he, he said, correct me if I'm wrong, he said that he really couldn't estimate what the cost per square foot of a structure like this would be because he didn't have that kind of recent experience. The numbers he threw out were for residential construction, and, uh, and they are dramatically different from what we saw and what would be proposed uh, by this effort. So I'll, uh, I'll keep quiet now, but uh, I look forward to seeing the numbers, and if they come back in and it's too much, yeah. We just, we pause and we put a construction trailer down there with an outdoor shower. Um, I would only say that we voted to allow Danny to proceed with the construction of a new building, new recreation center. Whether we pay this $75,000, $80,000 sitting here in front of us today, or pay it in October or November, it still has to be paid and it has to be done. And to get set up so this can go, if they, someone can get started on it as soon as the pool closes is important. We need to get motion on this so that uh, it doesn't drag on into next pool season. We hopefully will have a good winter and there'll be construction will be able to proceed all winter long. But this needs to get going. Well, we saw this last uh, time on the, the, the CAD system. That was a CAD operator that wasn't a, 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 an architect. Uh, and we're, we're dealing with all kinds of dreams or whatever with, with that system in my estimation simply because we're tear, tearing down the restrooms, replacing them all new and all that kind of stuff, which is that necessary? Is that necessary to do that? Why can't we use what we've got there? We need to take a look at this thing, and we need to have a plan. We here it is. We we got rid of one architect simply because he wanted to have a uh, structural engineer approve the plans and this kind of stuff, and he couldn't get that done until September. It is September. It is September now. We're three days away from it, but what what and. Why does it cost $25,000 to remove shingles from the, they do it every day. On every house I've ever seen, they take the shingles off of it and it would cost $25,000 to do it. Uh, yeah, if, if you disturb the, the asbestos tile on the floor, that's one thing. 
Uh, it doesn't take a hazmat to do that. It takes water. I've seen more buildings torn down, old buildings torn down, and they tear them down. They have an irrigation system there. They water it down. They keep the dust down. That's The dust is what's uh, hazardous. Uh, I, I don't think this is necessary. Uh, I think we're just hooting in the hollering. That's all I got to say about it. What would be your alternative, Mr. Commissioner Stamps? I, I think the alternative is we take that building down, sure enough, but we don't destroy the restrooms and stuff that are there. We, we take a look and see what we can do with that. Uh, this, this, the CAD system that he had, we approved the concept uh, of that, but to get a bid, he didn't know if it was going to be a stick-built building or a metal building or what it was going to be. There's, okay, it was just a concept. And I think we need to leave it at that. And, and, and yeah, we need to proceed with tearing down the actual rec center part of it. But we need to take a long, hard look at what we put back. I think uh, we did pose the question that you're talking about, sir, to... <laughs> Uh, Mr. Barry, when he was here, uh, you know, in, initiating an architecture process, and he said that that, that 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 would not be financial to try and build around the existing uh, restroom. restroom facility. <clears throat> I was not at that meeting. Yeah. We have a we have a building that is unusable, decaying with a rotting subfloor that we've been told by engineers should be closed and no one in there. So every day that we wait, it's just going to get worse. And every day that we wait, we won't be able to make a decision on where to go forward. So uh, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, we need to look at the bid. We tried to get bids all over the state, couldn't get any. That's not unusual. We only got one bid for the road project. You know, uh, we're a rural community, and these contractors would rather stay in an urban setting if they possibly can. But we do have one bid. We need to make a decision on that. So uh, let me, uh, do we have any more discussion by the commissioners? OK, let me open. Let me check and see if we have someone that made it a comment on on the rec center. Uh, David Dobrin, please, if you go to the <coughs> to the uh, podium. Uh, my name, as a citizen of Holiday Island, my name is David Dobrin, and I live on Oak Point Drive. And I was hired as the first building inspector. And in regards to our last endeavor, the rec center, I would like the board, for the record, to withdraw the demolition bid due to that being the only bid received. It is not uncommon for a government to withdraw a bid for any reason. I have not looked at the concerning issues that deem the building unsafe. I would like to do that before we might demo a repairable building. Furthermore, the bathrooms are on slab on grade, so there's no concerns in that area of the building. If we have to demo the building, we can build around the restroom. I'm not wanting to use up, I'm not one wanting to use up any resources. The ends do not justify the means. We need more infrastructure upgrades and we need a rec center. I suggest we put the rec center on hold till next year. And yeah, that may not be completed on time. If we still go ahead with this mistake, then a penalty should be written in the contract for not finishing in a timely manner. So on that note, I'll ask the board to withdraw the demolition of the rec center till next fall. But then I will have many more reputable contractors that will be competing to rebuild or repair our existing rec center at a fraction of the cost. And last but not least, volunteer fire department, which I joined, has a rating of six, which affects our insurance rating. Number one is being the best. The reason for this is because we only have four <coughs> Mr. Dobrin, reports. Mr. Dobrin, that would be appropriate in our public comment okay. section, but it's not pertinent to this subject. Okay, so that ends that on the uh, 
I'd ask you to withdraw that bid until we get further more information and other contractors to bid on it. Thank you for your comments. Let's see, Ms. Selleck, you have a public comment on the building? <coughs> State your name and address, please. And limited, comments are limited to three minutes. This will be quick. Jeanette Selleck, 22 bucks in <coughs> lane. I do go to the pool frequently, so I do see the rec center. And I don't understand, it was a question, I should have called Danny, but the air conditioner runs non-stop. Why is the air conditioner, why have, we, why have we been air conditioning an empty building all summer long? It just seemed like an absolute waste of money, but that's what we have a lot of. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, those are the only ones that signed up to comment on uh, the demolition project. Okay, so we need to decide which direction we're going to go. I move that we accept the bids that we have in hand. Okay, Commissioner Surratt has made a motion to uh, accept the bid for the rec center demolition. demolition. I'll second the bid. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Dyer has made a motion uh, to second. Any discussion? Would you like to do a roll call vote, please? Sure. Uh, Commissioner Childers? Yes. Vice Chair Dyer? Yes. Secretary Surratt? Yes. Commissioner Stamps? No. Commissioner uh, Brown? No. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last one. No. You said no. No, all right. Brown votes no. So we have 3 2 vote. Uh, <coughs> the motion has passed. All right, we're going to review contracts, and it says award contracts for the marine operation. However, we're just opening these this morning, so we are going to review them. Uh, whether we get to the point of awarding the contract, I don't know. We may That may take another session. Depends on how uh, we need to get into the, you know, we want it. This is a five-year contract, so we want to make sure that we understand it entirely. So. Madam Chair, could I ask a question before you begin? Uh, is this the first time that we've, uh, like, we get a lot of road paving and chip and seal bids. Uh, in the six years I've been on the board, I think those were opened in this room, and maybe the district manager and the road manager were there. They looked over the bids, sometimes there were only one, and then they, uh, the board approved the bid the next meeting. Uh, is this standard procedure that five of us would look over these bids and rate them on this matrix and then award the bid today at this meeting this morning? Mr. Presley and I talked about that because we we need to open those in a public setting, and then we need to look at them all together. We decided that if we, he and I perhaps <coughs> opened them, that someone might say that there was, you know, you know how our social media people are. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that it was more prudent to open them in open session and look at them in open session and discuss them. Whether or not we, we may ask him to take, now once we get them open, we may ask him to take them back, look at them even deeper, and then come back to us at a later time. Well, if one vendor, one bidder forgot something on it, do they get a chance to uh, comment on that or answer the board back? Or what? This, okay. is, this is their bid. This is their opportunity. All right, so what, what do you think the process for this is? Well, you, you all have a packet, as I, uh, and we do have represented here, uh, Mr. Culver, is that? Culver. Culver, okay. Uh, Dustin, Kelly. Dustin Kelly, I know that uh, Colin is here, and then the other guy is uh, Steve Martin, does not live in this area, so he's not in attendance today. Um, I explained to all of, of those who, who submitted a proposal that they were sealed, that no one on this board has seen them, nor would they see them until they're opened in this meeting. So uh, you have that in front of you, um, I guess if you would like to go ahead and open those and we can start in whatever order that Madam Chair uh, would like to go through. Well, I'm going to assume and they're in the packet all in the same order, so let's just start with the one on the top and work our okay. way down. Or at least the one, we'll start with the one that's on my top. And, and I'll mention that I, I did put together a little matrix there that, that you may or may not want to use for scoring. <coughs> this is, it could be somewhat a subjective decision, not necessarily numerical, but 
in an attempt to try to quantify some of the some of the elements of this that that we're considering. Um, I made up a little score sheet there that, that may or may not be helpful to you, so that's entirely up to you if you want to use that. Okay, we're, the one on, I have on top is uh, Dylan Clover. Am I saying that correctly? Clover. Clover. I'm sorry. Clover. All right, and he, Mr. Clover is from Branson West. He's the general manager of Indian Point Marina. Uh, at the present time, and has been there since 2015. <coughs> All right, I'm moving back to the letter that he wrote to us, <coughs> the third paragraph. The following are my responses to the proposed lease agreement put forth by district. What page you want? Uh, would be the four. fourth page. Uh, paragraph four, as rental for said premises, leasee agrees to pay 65% of all boat slip rental payments each year. So if you want to work off of your worksheet, the boat slip percentage would be 65%. Lessee will manage all boat slip rental contracts, billing, and collection. And then paragraph nine, Lessee agrees to receive 20% of boat slip rental payments as payment of being the docks watchman. The remaining 15% <coughs> being put toward upgrades and remodels. The lessee agrees to pay an additional $12,386, making a, an upgrade money a total of $50,000. That's the capital improvement commitment. 50,000. 50, 50, right. okay. I'm trying to see if that's a one-time thing or over the five years. Is that intended to be that's annually? Every year. Annually. Okay. annually. Can I ask a question? Let's see. Chairman Childers, may I ask a quick Let's question? Let's wait until we okay. go through all of this. Let's see, it is agreed, I'm looking at the bottom of that same page. It's agreed that large scale renovations will commence construction in the second year of the lease as funds allow, <clears throat> giving the lessee access to two years worth of upgrade monies. Priority being given to the fuel dock and store. Okay, to the next page. Lessee agrees to pay less or 5% of gross sales in connection with operating the marina, which would go at the top, or uh, in the second part of our worksheet. Is this like gasoline, uh, shirts, food, everything? Let's see, it says everything. including boat rentals, concessions, food, <coughs> alcoholic beverage, ice, fuel, bait, merchandise, I think just basically everything that's sold mm -hmm. down there. Okay. Uh, 40 hours of, minimum of 40 hours of operation, April the 1st through Memorial Day, 72 hours per week, Memorial Day to Labor Day, 40 hours of operation Labor Day to October 1st, and then from October to April, hours on Saturday and Sunday are by scheduled appointment. Did, did 
Did y'all notice anything that I missed? to move to the next one or take some time for y'all to look over them? Let's take just a little time. Sure. From my perspective, I think I'm going to need some away time. That's what I thought. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes indeed. I had a feeling we it's wouldn't not, be able yeah, to do this today. It wouldn't be fair to anybody. Yeah. No. For no. us no. to yeah. no. say we... This is, but we can yeah. say we, that they have been opened in an open meeting. Yeah. I mean, they, I think what you just went through is is uh, very beneficial, especially for the audience. But um, I think we we're going to need. Yeah. Cheryl, could you do us a favor and bring us a whole bunch of paper clips so that we can paper clip this <laughs> worksheet to the actual bid? Madam Chair, could I ask a question? Certainly. Or uh, Gillen, is this the? Uh, Marina, that uh, Mr. Morris is uh, negotiating to buy from Cabela's? No, sir. Thank you. I my glasses. <laughs> That's why I brought mine. I have fine prints on that few pages. Since I think we pretty much have all determined this is going to take more than one session, <laughs> let's at least go ahead to the next one that we have that's in my packet. Just one question then on mm -hmm. uh, that um, Dylan concluded. Uh, yes. The first square bow slip percentage, 65, mm -hmm. that's the key. That the bidder would get 65% of all money for the bow slips. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said we'd get 35. Let me look at it and see. I think. Oh, I need about four. Yes. Uh, I didn't hear your question, Ken. Um, the first square on Bill and Kluver's uh, proposal, at the, I, I wrote down 65% bow slip percentage. Does that mean that the bidder gets 65% of all monies and I said gets 35%? It says the lessee, which is the bidder. Would pay to 65. the district pays us. Okay. sixty five percent to us. Gotcha. I'm yeah. sorry. Thank you. All right. <laughs> uh, the next one that I have in my packet is Dustin Kelly from Berryville, Arkansas. Uh, his bid proposal. Okay, y'all help me out here on the boat slip rentals, which I see on the second page. Uh, <clears throat> remit payment to lessor in the amount equal to the agreed upon percentage of boat slip rentals. Do you see a percentage on there? 50. 
Is that what we put Is out? Is that the correct understanding for everyone? Seven. seven. Yes, it's seven. seven. So the court. Uh, yes, and, and the reason being because our contract with the Corps of Engineers ends in seven years, okay. so this would run concurrent with that contract. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, the 50% uh, covered in the boats. <coughs> so the other products... The gross sales, it, it appears to be a varying amount. Let's see. Got yeah, it. between 5 and 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the okay. On so, the third page, of, uh, it has the hours of commitment for hours of operation. Uh, which just briefly looking at it, I think are similar to the first proposal. I'd have to go back and double check, but it appears to be similar. That's something we need to compare. Yeah, let's see about the... That's a, approximately 9% on the sales okay. percentage. Um, I'm sure I have one uh, question back on page two. Uh, both slip rentals, it's a zero, zero percent, and eight slips for operator use. So uh, on like dock one or other docks, the uh, district would give the uh, bidder eight slips for his rental boats and receive no income from the rental of those boats. Is that what I'm reading? And I'm sorry, I couldn't yeah. hear yeah, you well. On, on page two, there's paragraph two, and that goes down, proposed schedule of sales of product income. Apparel is 10%. Yes. Go, down, go down where it says boat slip rentals. Uh, the first one was bug spray maintenance, but the next one is boat slip rentals. Yes. That means we would get zero for it, but we would have to give up eight slips. We get 5% of the, of the revenue of the rental of those uh, motorized vessels. Oh, we get 5%. 5% there, so that would. Okay. Offset. So we would get 5% of the <coughs> slip rental for the motorized vehicles, the boats. No, 5% of the uh, rental. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Correct. I think Larry's correct. It would be there would be a percentage based on whether it's a motorized vessel or non-motorized vessel, and also for fuel, you know, that comes in. So I think that's how he's anticipating covering those eight slips that we allow the operator to have. Okay. Uh, what other services? Uh, the bottom uh, category there in the proposed schedule is services would not be helping people to move their uh, boat or going out in the lake yeah. and collecting boats that are disabled or what, what kind of I would of assume it would be any kind of labor that he provides, you know, okay. to a customer at agreed upon rate. So it's a hundred dollar charge, the district will get five percent, yes. five dollars of that. Yeah. Emma, do you do you see it the same way? 
I haven't there, ever looked in a marina bin before, so y'all help me out here. <laughs> there is a reference in the contract to providing transport services ah. if someone needs a ride by water to wherever. Okay. And so uh, that may be one reason that he's made that reference there. And in order to do that, I think you have to have a licensed boat captain if you're transporting someone by water uh, for pay. And actually, if we go to the next page, in the middle of the page, it says, Lessee may provide the following services, servicing, repairing, maintaining, and caring for privately owned boats and motors, or transportation of passengers by boat for hire. That's it. So those would all be services. Okay, help me find the uh, capital improvement commitment. I see some things there on the last page, the, uh, the last paragraph, where it starts with cables and anchors and goes through uh, some other upgrades and improvements, yes. um, repairs and improvements to the marina structure, but I don't see anything there numerically. Okay. have a chance to look at this individually. Let's move to the next one. Does that Spreadsheet. Okay. 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 Upgrades, the lessee will pay the lessor of 20%. Am I reading that right? Where are you seeing that? I'm on the last page. We were looking for upgrades. one that I have in front of me is a this proposal is from no, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Okay. okay, Mr. Martin. Oh, Mr. Martin, yes. All right, Steve Martin. <coughs> His proposal, Mr. Martin, for gross sales, uh, yeah. will give back 20% of the money in gross sales. Slips. Slips. The lessee will give back 70% of monies taken in each fiscal year. He has a separate item on basically the rental of the kayaks and the paddle boats, those types of things, of The lessee will work through the lessor to inspect the marina for upgrades to help restore all property to new working order and or property aesthetics. Um, if during the inspection it is determined that upgrades or repairs are needed, the lessee will coordinate with the lessor to rectify 
all issues, the lessee will pay the lessor 20% of any required capital improvement, I believe. Although in some instances, that's truly not a capital improvement, that's just a maintenance. Mm -hmm. else in this one that you want to comment on? Uh, I don't see hours of operation, but I think that's a minute. Yeah. I, I guess uh, one, one uh, giant question that I have looking at the Martin proposal is um, what experience does Mr. Martin have That's in right. marina operation and that yeah. kind of thing? And yes, it's not listed here, is it? That was one of the reasons that I listed uh, on this score sheet, if you will, this matrix, other considerations. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Just for. All right, let's look at the proposal from KP Doc Services, our last proposal. like the percentage of the slip share will be 20 percent. Do I see that? Is that correct? Yes. Yes ma'am. And three percent of gross sales. A yearly capital Improvement fee of no less than forty thousand dollars. Yearly. Commissioners, my suggestion is clearly we're going to have to take more time to look through all of these. That we uh, allow the people who have wanted to come and speak about the marina to uh, address the board and then just uh, table this until the next meeting. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Hello. I mean, we may want to kind of conduct an interview, too, of uh, maybe the top yeah. two. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, I need to, this is a seven-year deal. I know, and I'm, I'm not going to make an instant decision. I yes. I feel warm and fuzzy yes. about whoever we, yeah. whoever we give this golden ducat to. Mr. Brown, uh, Commissioner Stamps, are you willing to, let's move to public comment? Sure. Yes. All right, let's see what we have here. Uh, Mr. Clever, and I know I'm saying that wrong, and I am Please so me. sorry. Right. She I, doesn't have a clue. I, obviously, I don't. Uh, <laughs> and thank you for your bid. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I just wanted to briefly introduce myself to the board. My name is Dylan Kluver, Branson West. I've been with Indian Point Marina for 13 years now. Uh, since 2015 in management. Um, uh, 
you know, my wife's a school nurse, so I have two small children. Um, and Marina is my full time occupation. Uh, sometimes, 24 hours a day, the phone rings and I answer. A um, couple things I wanted uh, to make note of in my bid uh, that there was uh, the upgrade money. Um, it would come to $50,000 a year annually, and the money be placed into a, a fund or an account which the district could uh, keep tabs on, and that money would be allowed to roll over the next year. Because uh, building a new store, a new school dock, uh, it's going to take a lot of money. So. Uh, Capital improvements made each year. I put in the bid though, for example, if $30,000 is spent that year, $20,000 will go for next year, which you would have access to have eyes on. Um, I just really appreciate the opportunity and thank you guys. Thank and we you. thank you for your bid. Okay. Let's see. I have more papers here than I know what to do with right now. Uh, Mr. Sum Sumsey, do you prefer? Would you like to speak on the marina, or Donnie? No. Oh, I have no comment. All right. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Dustin Kelly, would you like to speak about the yes. marina? Good morning. My name is Dustin Kelly. It's a pleasure to meet all of you all. Uh, I am born and raised here in Carroll County. I um, intend to spend my life here and keep it the place I like to call home. Uh, the marina job is something that, in my opinion, would be a 24 7 job, and uh, I would not take it lightly. Um, I do not currently have marina operator experience, but I have been in the construction field for about 18 years. Um, my dad was a carpenter, and I worked for him for six or seven years building houses. I know a lot of ins and outs of carpentry. And I currently am operating a, or managing a multi-million dollar a year contract for my boss who's Barrett Excavation. And I built the electric substations for Care Electrics. Um, and it is something which has given me lots of management skills and how to manage money and do day-to-day -day, do -day operations. Um, I would like to incorporate all kinds of events, which initially the events down here at the marina is where the money's going to come from for you and I both. Um, I want to get all fam I want it all family oriented. Um, have something going every weekend, whether it's live bands, um, some kind of fishing tournament, a ski tournament. Um, incorporate the marina into a holiday island where everybody feels like they need to spend their time down there. Um, I would also, one thing I would like to see happen is do some kind of package operation with marina, the golf course, try to incorporate all the entities of Holiday Island together to promote more business for Holiday Island. Uh, and on my capital improvement, it's hard for me to set a number on that because to upgrade that to match whatever facility we wanted to look to, the number could be minimal or it could be a huge number. So it's nearly impossible for me to put a set number on capital improvement. And I'm willing to do whatever I can to get it upgraded to where it needs to be. <coughs> I've talked to a few grant writers and different stuff, and there's grant money out there, there's opportunities for us to get money to do endless amount of stuff if we want to. And I would like to try to use that to the full extent that I can as well. Um, and if you guys have any questions, I am more than glad to answer them. I incorporated the spreadsheet with my bid. It's not anything exact. It is an example of what I would monthly give to you guys to show you what kind of revenue goes on. You can be able to see my full inventory, my sales, and know exactly where, what money goes and how it comes to you. And, and, yep, go ahead. Going. and we thank you for your bid. Yes, I sure appreciate the opportunity to do it. And I appreciate all that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ponk, it doesn't seem uh, fair to not we let the others speak. Would you like to speak? <laughs> no, 
Never gets easier. This trusty tablet. <laughs> um, uh, so, and you guys got my bid packet. Uh, there was a couple of things I wanted to clarify. Uh, there was a forty thousand dollar capital improvement fee um, set aside down there. Um, I foresee that being uh, forty thousand dollars every year, um, assuming that something has happened down there. Um, that place has had a lot of upgrades. Most of them have come at the cost of the operator down there. Um, I don't necessarily want to see that continued um, if the operator's paying forty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars, which you guys asked for, um, and there's no improvements going on there. What happens if they spend that forty thousand dollars for the next seven years, and you guys give the bid to somebody else? Um, so specifically, my bid said. You can get $40,000 a year if you put your money into it. Um, but until that happens, uh, there is a plan in there for me to actually spend my money to take over that project. Um, and so that would include uh, using up some of the stalls down there in the first dock, getting core approval and closing those in um, to actually make the store bigger and do some of the things that we want to do. Um, so it's kind of... Uh, two-handed story, so if, if the money is spent, the improvements are actually implemented, uh, the operator should be more than happy and willing to pay a fee for capital improvements down there. But if nothing's happening, you're basically asking somebody to just say, here's this promise money that we can promise you we might not ever touch. Um, and then what happens if year six comes around and you guys actually use that improvement money, then that means the operator only has one year to make anything out of all of that. Um, so that's a key point in my bid packet um, that is, it's kind of a, a different way to look at things. Um, also in there, I didn't just promise you money, um, which is what a lot of the contracts look like. Uh, I promised events. Um, yeah, if for some of you who were at the Rotary Club Friday, um, you know what those events were. Uh, I plan on taking over the fireworks. Um, that this community has lacked for several years. Um, that should be done by the marina operator. Um, cost 100%. Um, so a few things like that, um, not necessarily asked for in the contract, but um, definitely some promises. Can I ask a question? I have a question. Oh. Yes. Uh, Kevin, I, I think, tell me if I'm wrong, you're uh, presenting the boat slip percentage the opposite way from what everybody else has put it. No. You no. all would get 80%. We, well, see, that's, that, that's exactly my question because I'm reading the 20%. Blue and I don't want to pick that 20, up. Yeah. 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 I, I want to make sure we're on the right page. So 80% to keep apples to apples because that's the way the others have been presented as, as the highest you know, get 80%. Share. Um, yeah, that's yes. yeah, got it. Uh, and then one more thing for the, the upgrades. Um, I want to speak to some of the issues that I know uh, have been floating around. One of those upgrades that's in my packet would um, offer space for an actual office, which is severely missing down at the marina. Um, so that would be the priority. So. Um, Colin, you have. Uh that what you just explained, 40000 per year and uh, seven years would be 280000 280000 And if Heisid uh, doesn't replace the dock, but we discussed this several months ago, maybe longer, and uh, to get payback of uh, replacing a dock or two docks, it'd be years, 18 years. So what that means, unless a different board does something that they feel an 18-year payback is good for a million dollars, then there will be no new docks. Uh, uh, this misleading. Um, the, the payback you're speaking of was for uh, adding slips to the dock. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for replacing the first dock. Um, and the 18-year return, it wouldn't be for a million dollars. Um, that's definitely not the cost to add some slips to replace the dock. Um, so it's the capital improvement plan that I think everyone's kind of talking about is replacing the whole first dock, which the district doesn't really make money on with the current contract. Uh, that's why there's the <coughs> gross uh, percentage in there as well as the capital improvement promise. Um, because 
if y'all aren't making money on it, why would you want to pay for a new store? Um, and that's kind of the, the situation. It's why should the new operator pay for promises that might not ever get fulfilled? Another question I have is uh, the previous uh, manager several years ago before your uh, management, uh, he collected the money and uh, turned the checks and so forth into the district office here. Since that time, since you've been on, uh, the uh, office staff here does that. What would be your and the other two, I guess, bidders' proposal? I, th I think it should be done by the operator, not the part of one. And that's person. what the current contract that Danny uh, sends all of us states is that the the new guy, whoever it is, comes in. Uh, they do all the billing, the bookkeeping, 100%. Um, sorry, Cheryl, I know you won't. You're going to miss that. Um, <laughs> and, and instead of the distrust with the previous um, Alan, we'll just call him Alan, um, instead of the distrust, Alan would have to pay as if it's 100% full from day one. So there's no distrust. There's This is how much the slips are supposed to be, that they're all full. You get 150K, here's your 150K. There's no more what is. You know, Colin and I talked about that. We just felt like that was a, a better business model. It's more transparent. Mm -hmm. And um, I think just an overall better way to go. It'll work better for the customers, too. Yeah. Okay. I, I agree. One other kind of, uh, question, Colin, and uh, I'm trying to read through here. You have a good one. All of you did a good job of this. But uh, let's say you put in a restaurant and it's uh, 100000 Let's just throw out some numbers. You put a restaurant down there. And at the end of the seven years, you paid for it, you paid for it. Then how does the district either A, compensate you, or are you going to give it to the district? Or this would be true for all, all vendors, but bidders. Um, I think that just has to be something put in the contract. Any new um, improvements made by the operator are relinquished at the time of his okay. disappearing, leaving, whatever you want to call it. I well, mean, that was one of your goals when you had the tour down there, right? Expand. Uh, yeah. Level. Yeah, and it's it's in that bit packet too. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's it's what's needed. It's the last key, really. That and events. Okay. One last question. The big. Uh, I I haven't gone down there to uh, watch you do some of these repairs, but I guess they're pretty significant. Uh, what do you charge uh, high sick uh, if you have? Docks that are moving away and anchors and so forth. I might ask the other boys the same question. No. Great. Well, that's, that's you, you pay us to do that. That's, that's a big deal. You've, you've done a lot of work down there. I know that. Thank you. Thank you for your bid, Colin. Thanks. Ms. Talbot, I wasn't sure. Did you want to speak on this item or at the public comment at the end? I was just speaking to the public comment. I think that's coming up rather shortly. Okay. <laughs> because I believe we've worked down through everybody that wanted to speak on the marina. All right, so let's move to public comment and uh, call on Ms. Talbot. I'm Barb Talbot. I live at 9 Horseshoe Drive, Holiday Island. And I'm coming to you as a homo at this point. I, I need to be real clear that I'm speaking as a homo. When I'm in town, and sometimes I'm absent quite a bit, when I'm in town, I go to all meetings, whether it's an organization, whether it's a high sit meeting, whether it's a city meeting. And my goal there is to listen not only to public comments, but the, the comments uh, from the people who are in charge of our decisions. What I've observed recently, uh, in my mind, is priority. And even though you set certain priorities at point A, when you get way down the line somewhere, those priorities can shift because there may be unknown factors and so forth. Uh, I'm not against whatever the community wants, but I'm a big proponent of what priorities are and what they come to be. There's been some points delivered in recent weeks on items that are of great concern. Whether it's uh, the UV conversion from uh, the chlorine system, whether it's the PRV, is it PRV or PVR, whatever it is, uh, that's of, of some concern yeah. as well. 
And then you have the rec center. You know, I'll talk quite a bit to current commissioners and other people who have had extensive time in the community. My understanding in particular where the rec center is concerned, at the time it was originally constructed, that was in the beginning years, and that was the hub of the community. We didn't have what I call up top where the golf course is, where we truly have a recreational center. <coughs> And I look at things strictly for numbers. I don't put a name on it, I don't put a base on it. And I look at return on investment. What I heard in the last week or so uh, is a couple of points related to the swimming pool. That we have severely lost income from the swimming pool recently because of the decision to increase the voucher amount. You don't have to be an economist to know that when you increase in Put yourself out of the market, it's going to have an effect. We now have a competitor in, in the community that took advantage of coming under that particular rate. My understanding of the rec center, it is a, a point of check-in. It's not what it used to be. I look at the golf center up there and what I see is a grand opportunity that you have rooms for people to gather. You have rooms for people to rent and put money into that center. And it's kind of like we're fighting with our own competitors by having two places when one, and that being the rec center now, uh, isn't a community center. It's a check-in point, okay? And then you have, you have the island room. I haven't looked, but it would be easy enough uh, that a comment was made about having lost income, uh, having to work out of the island uh, center. Exception of the last two years because of the COVID effect, I would be willing to bet that if you went five years back or even further and picked the highest number of the amount of money that was received for renting that room out, it may be negligible. I don't know. I don't know if anyone has looked, but I would certainly look into that. But um, prioritizing changes. It, it, it's a liquid component of everything. And what I ask of you is to please, please consider those priorities because they do change. Even if you've got a, a set amount of money for something, you may have a $100,000 pump that goes out that was not planned. So I would appreciate uh, that consideration if we move on any point. This is the perfect time of year. It's the perfect time. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> All right, commissioners, have comments? I have several comments. At last week's meeting, a resident provided a public comment, and I would like to respond to her allegations. First, she alleged that board members received a complaint from the Arkansas Ethics Commission, and that is true. Commissioners are required to file a statement of financial interest annually, and due to an unanticipated delay, ours were a few days late. She filed an ethics complaint, and we received a reprimand from the commission. Was it worth the commission's time, energy, and postage? That is for you to decide. I can assure you that these reports in the future will not be a daylight. Likely you have not seen a statement of financial interest report. Unless you own a road paving company or perhaps a chemical company that might contract with Holiday Island, there is very little of interest to the public in that annual financial filing. Secondly, she inferred that the board does not follow accepted executive session requirements. Within the past year, I recall only one executive session. It was held for an approved legal reason, as they all are, and the results of the session were announced in public as required by law. We understand the requirements for an executive session. Also, the speaker accused the district manager of receiving an illegal gift. The resident was referring to the payment of airfare and housing made by our local volunteer organization, HIPRO, for the district manager to represent Holiday Island at a Places to Retire Expo. 
held in Chicago in January of 2021. The State of Arkansas Division of Tourism is tasked with promoting tourism and marketing the State of Arkansas. They participate in numerous travel expos and conferences around the country each year. For several years, they have attended the Travel, Relocation, and Retirement Expo in Chicago, along with several other Arkansas communities, Bella Vista, Horseshoe Bend, Cherokee Village, and Hot Springs Village. This year, Holiday Island was invited by the Division of Tourism to occupy one of six booths that are paid for by the state. Holiday Island wanted to participate and promote our own community alongside those other retirement communities. But as we received notice of this opportunity in December, no funds had been budgeted for the expense. Hypro offered to sponsor the trip and pay for hotel and airfare. Hypro's mission is to promote Holiday Island and entice people to move here. This expo was consistent with their purpose. It was a brief two and a half day trip held over the weekend. It was not a pleasure trip. In fact, Mr. Presley worked those two days setting up a Holiday Island booth and engaging with hundreds of prospective Holiday Island tourists and engaging with hundreds of prospective people who might want to relocate to Holiday Island. Hypro got 700 contacts from that weekend trip. Bella Vista, Horseshoe Bend, Cherokee Village, and Hot Springs Village have participated in this event for years. But this was the first time for Holiday Island to be represented. It was very successful, and the state, of Holiday, the state has asked Holiday Island to come back. I appreciate that Mr. Presley volunteered his personal time, his weekend time, and his public relations skills to promote home ownership in Holiday Island. The trip was not an illegal gift. My second comment is that last week, commissioners received an email from a resident alleging negligence and personal liability for all current and past commissioners, citing neglect of our infrastructure. I asked that the district manager forward the email to the district's attorney, who then assured commissioners that all district and commissioner actions were legal and appropriate and within the purview of Arkansas law. This resident has posted significant allegations and strident demands on social media. I want to assure all property owners, regardless of what you read on social media, that Holiday Island provides efficient, effective, safe, and legal community services, all within the constraints of its budget. Would we like to complete every major maintenance project? Would we like to upgrade our water lines? Would we like to repave every road? Would we like to hire additional firemen? Of course we would. However, just like you and me, Holiday Island has to live within a budget. In budget sessions last year, after we reviewed our fixed, usual, and customary costs, approximately $400,000 remained for major maintenance projects. Yet we faced over $2 million in needed maintenance and improvement requests, including the marina. That was my first year working with other commissioners in establishing a budget. I quickly realized the dilemma that current and past boards have faced. There is not enough income to complete all needed projects, and priorities must be set. And those priorities have always been infrastructure and safety. Each year since 2012, between 70 to 90 percent of those few precious extra dollars have been spent on water, sewer, roads, fire, and EMS. Social media posts advocate that commissioners defund the amenities. As a commissioner, I do not feel that I can vote to abandon any of the amenities. The value of those amenities comprise a portion of the value of your assessment. If those amenities were abandoned, no golf course, no marina, 
no swimming pool, no campground. A new assessment of benefits would be required, and it would result in lowered assessments, which would mean that the value of your property has been lowered, and it would cause those lower assessments. That would mean that even less money would be available to meet the needs of this community. To the degree possible, it is the board's responsibility to maintain those amenities. Realtors indicate that the amenities are what sells Holiday Island. Without its easy access to boating, fishing, golf, swimming, tennis, its low density of population, and its scenic beauty, Holiday Island would be just another subdivision in just another town. Why would you care to live here? Please remember this about those people that serve on the board. We are your friends. We are your neighbors. We all made the decision to move to Holiday Island. We all live in Holiday Island. We want the best for Holiday Island. You elected us to serve in this position because you trusted us to use our intelligence and our common sense to maintain and improve the community that we all chose to live in. We accept this task. We rely on proven, qualified professionals who know and understand the Holiday Island infrastructure and its needs. We will do our best for your property values and for you. Other commissioner comments? Madam Chair, can, Mayor. I, can I use my turn now? That I yes, you can use your turn. This you pass. Public yes, you make one. <clears throat> you didn't think I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> we appreciate it when you <laughs> ground us in reality. Uh, Dan Keyes, 120 Holiday Island Drive. Uh, I wanted to uh, make uh, something clear. Um, the, the comments that David made, uh, he is a city employee, and uh, he's a valued city employee. He has years and years of construction experience, and our local contractors are starting to learn things about building codes that they may have uh, been uh, overlooking over the years. However, his comments were his personal comments as a property owner. The, uh, the city has no horse in the race relative to uh, the, uh, the decision made on the rec center. Um, my second comment, and uh, this is maybe just parsing words, <laughs> but I heard a lot of comments about the uh, bidders making capital improvements. Technically, I believe that capital improvements have to be made by the district. The district would own those assets and they would depreciate those assets. What these guys would be doing would be making leasehold improvements. Um, the ownership of those leasehold improvements, if they're going to retain a financial interest in those leasehold improvements, then the district cannot capitalize them and depreciate them, and some sort of arrangement needs to be made as to who owns those uh, you know, those improvements at the end of the contract. So just a point of clarification. I don't think that the, the leasees would be making capital improvements. Thank you for your clarification. All right, let's move to uh, <coughs> scheduling. Our next regularly oh. scheduled. Madam Chair, yes. I, I forgot to make a comment, but I'd like to thank you for what you just said, because uh, having sat on this board for close to six years now, I think your points were right on target. Uh, it makes you feel badly when you come to a job and you get paid zero dollars. <laughs> the county uh, JPs are paid quite a bit for their meetings, and that's fine with them. We paid zero dollars, and we come here. I've been in part of a lawsuit about eight years ago and so forth, and it's very troubling, and I'm not uh, watching uh, social media anymore, but we try to do the very best we can, and sometimes we make errors, and uh, at the end of October, there are two positions coming up on this board. Uh, toward the end of October, I'm not sure of the date, you'll get a letter in your mail about two positions on this board. They're going to be two, three-year terms. 
And um, I was excited last year, we had six people, six, uh, run for two positions. And one was a three-year post and one was a one-year post. This time it's two three-year posts. And I'd like you to consider that, but before you go into it, have a tough skin, be an alligator-like background on your back, and uh, hopefully you won't get any uh, of the things that uh, Madam Chair just mentioned. And one of them was really uh, important to me, and that's ethics. I'm an ethical person, I'm a Christian person, I try to do the best I can day in and day out. And when you make a mistake of one letter on a, on a document, one number, and uh, you're investigated by the Ethics Commission of Arkansas, it makes it real hard. But she did a wonderful job, Suzanne, of uh, telling it like it is, and I appreciate what you're doing for us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's move to commissioner scheduling, unless there are other comments from the board. All right, our next regularly scheduled meeting is on September the 26th. I would like to propose that because uh, several people will be absent in uh, late September, that we have a work session regarding the budget on October the 3rd. Did that work for everyone? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Stamps, was that all right with you? Yeah. Commissioner yeah. Brown? Yeah. All right, so we will have a work session on October the 3rd. And our next regularly scheduled meeting will be uh, September the 26th. Okay, and we also talked about another. And you know, I'm going to move backward and yeah, ask, do we need to make a motion to table these bids until the next meeting? Yes, ma'am. I bet we do. All right, I need a motion to table uh, the uh, contract, the award of the contract for the Marine Contractor. So moved. All right. Commissioner Brown has made a motion to table the uh, award. The award for the contract until the September meeting. Do I hear a second? I would second that motion. Commissioner Dyer will second, and I apologize for forgetting to do that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And again, I want to thank all of the bidders that we had this morning. Appreciate you the I, work that you put into all of this, and. Uh, I wish we could make a, uh, an award today, but there is no way. <laughs> All right, do I hear a motion for adjournment? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Did you mention also of some, we're not scheduling this October 17th? No, we're just going to go those two for right now. Yes. Okay. All right, do I hear a motion for adjournment? Is the next regular meeting the 25th? Did you say I didn't hear it? 26th, I believe. 26th. 26. All right. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? So moved. Make, uh, Commissioner Dyer's made a motion for adjournment. Second? Second. Commissioner Brown has seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you to the audience. We appreciate your uh, attendance.